Hello, welcome back. Now that we know how much mortgage we can afford, let's take a look at how do we choose a mortgage that works for you. There are different types of mortgages. We'll go into each of those in more details. Um, there are fixed rate mortgage, adjustable rate mortgage, graduated payment mortgage, balloon payment mortgage, and interest only mortgage. So the reason we want to, uh, I want to introduce all of them here is just to have a general overview of um, the different types and the complexity of different mortgages that you can choose from. In general, regardless of the type of mortgage that you choose, um, you need to go through an application and an approval process. Um, so lenders will usually require borrowers to list all the asset and liability and also provide evidence of income. Uh, good news for us, we in this class, we already did a lot, almost uh, all of this work. Remember, we created a statement of net worth earlier on. And in the, when you create your statement of net worth, you have, you have collected information about your assets and your liabilities. So you're already all set and all done there. Uh, in addition, when we talk about income and existing debt payment, we actually have done more work than that. We have created a statement of cash flow. So that takes into account your uh, income and expenses. So statement of cash flow will have all the information about income and expenses beyond just debt payment. Uh, in addition, you have created a budget that will also give you an idea of what those uh, income and debt payments are. So we are already all set. We have all the information we need to apply for a mortgage. When you apply for a mortgage, the lender will ask you to give them permission to get a credit report and verify all the information on your application. It's important that you compare lenders before you go through the pre-approval process. The reason is that when you get a mortgage pre-approval, that can affect your credit score. Uh, getting a pre-approval, even though you're not taking out a loan, is still considered a credit event, and that can affect your credit score. So you do want to compare different lenders, but you don't want to be getting multiple pre-approvals because that can, be, uh, that can negatively affect your credit score. And if you have a lower credit score, that will eventually affect your interest rate. Now let's take a look at different types of mortgages. Next, let's take a look at different types of mortgages in more detail. First, let's look at fixed rate mortgage. This is the most common type of mortgage and it typically lasts between 10 to 30 years with 30 years being the most common. The important thing about a fixed rate mortgage is that both interest rate and your monthly payment remain fixed throughout the life of the loan. And we talk about one of the advantages of owning a home uh, versus renting is that you get to have um, stability in your mortgage and your housing expenses. For most fixed rate mortgage, it does not have a prepayment, prepayment penalty. It's important to check that because if interest rate happen to decrease in the future, you want to have the option and the ability to refinance your loan at a lower interest rate because these are fixed rate mortgages uh, without having to worry about uh, payment, prepayment penalties. The second most common type of mortgage is just uh, adjustable rate mortgages. As the name imply, uh, the, the interest rate in this will change. Uh, one characteristic of an adjustable rate mortgage is the initial rate in the beginning is typically lower than fixed rate mortgages. However, future interest rate is tied to an interest rate index, and this is sometimes useful to know the terms. Uh, one is one very common index or benchmark is the prime rate. The prime rate is the interest rate that banks charge each other or their most favored customer. So you and I as individuals seldom get the prime rate. So the interest rate is tied to it, which means it will be the prime rate plus some kind of adjust, uh, some, some kind of premium to account for the fact that we are not the bank's most favored customer. 
the frequency of rate adjustment will vary by contracts. And this is something very important to pay, pay attention to. Uh, if the frequency is monthly, then your mortgage payment can change from month to month. Most of the most frequency, uh, most common frequency are either every six months or every year. The other thing that you want to check when you uh, in the mortgage contract is whether or not there are caps. The caps is the maximum and minimum changes in the interest rate. So let's say your beginning interest rate is 5%. And if you have a 1% cap, that means each time the rate adjusts, it cannot adjust more than 1%. So even if the interest rate go up by 3%, that is greater than the cap, you will still be within the cap. Some adjustable rate mortgage also have the have a conversion option. So that means you can convert it to some kind of fixed rate in the future and the rate may or may not be specified in the contract. This can be valuable because if you refinance, or meaning uh, change your adjustable, adjustable rate mortgage to a fixed rate mortgage, uh, refinancing costs money. There are loan origination fee and there's appraisal fee. So they are not cheap, they're a few thousand dollars. So if you have an adjustable rate mortgage that have a conversion feature that will enable you to do the conversion without having to pay the, adjust, uh, the additional refinancing cost. We mentioned other types of mortgages. Uh, one is called a graduated payment mortgage. So the essence of the important concept here is that in a graduated uh, mortgage, the payments are low in the early years and then they rise to a higher level over time. A balloon payment mortgage is a mortgage where the payments are relatively low, but you are not paying off the entire loan. So an important, and we'll talk about amortization next. Uh, so most of us think that if we make our payment, then at the end, we'll have pay off our loan and we'll own our home. That's not the case for a balloon mortgage. If you have a balloon mortgage, you can make your monthly payment. But at the end of quote unquote, the loan, which is the specified loan period, you would not have pay off the mortgage. You still have a relatively large balance. And that's what the term balloon means. It has a huge payment uh, hanging out at the end. Uh, other mortgages uh, may include an interest only mortgage. Um, so, some adjustable rate mortgage will actually allow borrowers to pay only the interest on the mortgage. If you're paying only the interest that you're not paying off the loan at all. So all of these mortgages have one thing in common. Uh, most of them will strive to give you a low initial payment, but then the loan is not pay off. In fact, in the case of the graduated payment mortgage, sometimes the payment are so low in the beginning years that your loan balance actually end up going up, even though you are making payments. Uh, this is similar to when you have a credit card balance and you pay the, only the minimum required payment, the minimum payment, you are not paying off the balance on your credit card. In fact, if the balance is high, your minimum payment may not even cover the interest and your, bon and your loan balance or your credit card balance can keep going up even though you are making the minimum payment. And that is the case in a graduated payment mortgage. It's not always, but it can happen. So again, the takeaway here is that for all of this loan, they have low initial payment, but then the loan is not pay off and you end up with a large liability, even though you have been making payment along the way. This, all these different types of loans um, gave us really important lessons from the financial crisis. This is the financial crisis in 2008. I know it's, uh, it's been a while, but the, we can, the lessons are still important for us to learn today. Um, what happened during 2008 was that the economy went, um, suffered a severe recession and house prices went down. In fact, the two are um, intertwined very much in 2008. 
as a result of decrease in housing prices and a lot of people's inability to make their mortgage payment, many owners end up owning more than the value of the house. And so that turned into a foreclosure problem. People are losing their home. And when they lose their home, they have they receive nothing because all the payment that they have made into the loan was not sufficient to cover the value of the uh, uh, into the house was not sufficient to co cover the balance of the loan. So as a result of the financial crisis, legislations were passed to improve consumer protection. And they are primarily increased uh, protection in the area of the application process. So they required um, mortgage lenders to have more disclosure, meaning they have to explain the loans more clearly to applicants. And applicants also have to provide more documentation to show that, yes, they are able to make the mortgage payment. They also prohibit predatory practices. Predatory practices are pre practices that is designed to take advantage of consumers. So basically, if a mortgage lender intentionally sell you a loan or give you a loan that you have no ability to repay based on your current income and asset, uh, that would be considered predatory. Next, let's take a closer look at how these loans work. Uh, these loans are referred to as amortized loans. And the term amortized here refers to the fact that this loan are intended to be paid off over time. First, let me introduce a few terms. Uh, when we are talking about amortized loan, uh, you need to know something called principal. Principal is, has to do with the loan. So this is how much you borrow. And each month, when you take out an amortized loan, you will make payments every month. And each payment contains two things, the interest portion and the principal portion. So the way that the amortization schedule, this is how your loan gets paid down or pay off over time. So it, pick, it is important for us to understand how it works. The interest that you own each period is equal to the remaining balance times the interest rate. So that seems to be make sense, right? This is how much you owe the bank times the interest rate. The payment that you make when you can be used to reduce your loan payment or your loan balance. So you take the payment that you make. So the payment is fixed each period. You take your fixed payment minus the interest that you computed based on your remaining balance. Anything over and above the interest is considered principal payment. And the principal payment will subtract, will be re used to reduce the loan balance. So the loan balance will be subtracted by the principal portion. So as long as your payment is greater than the interest, anything excess in excess over interest will be used to pay down your principal. So a fully amortized loan is a loan that if you make your payment every single month, then the loan will be fully repaid at maturity. So at the end of the loan, it will be fully paid, provided that you make all payments. In contrast, a loan that has a balloon, they're sometimes called a partially amortized loan, uh, the way that it works is, you will not pay off the loan. So the way that uh, in loan, a balloon loan is structured is that you will compute your payment based on what we call a hypothetical maturity. It's hypothetical because the loan is actually due much sooner than the hypothetical maturity. So the actual maturity is much sooner. So when the loan becomes due, there is still a large amount remaining and that has to be paid off all at once. And that is the balloon. Uh, balloon, pay, balloon loans are typically quoted as two numbers. So in here, this is called a 10-3. 10-3 means that when you compute the fixed payment, it is based on the fact that you have 10 years to pay off the loan. So the payment is much lower. 
However, the loan is due after three years. So the 10 is the hypothetical maturity. The three in here is the actual maturity. Next, we're going to take a look at some actual numbers and we'll see how does this work. To keep this example simple, we're going to use a small loan amount and we're going to keep uh, your payment frequency to once per year. Obviously, you can change all this to fit your real life situation. Um, so in this particular example, we're borrowing only $10,000 at 8% per year for three years. And we'll make payment once per year. So obviously you can change this to per year, uh, from per year to per month to adapt it for your own use. And in order to compute the month, uh, the annual payment, this is the fixed payment, we'll need to use the payment function from the time value of money. So the PMT or payment function, the first argument is the interest rate. In this example, it is 8%. And the second argument is the, the long term. In this case, is three times or three years, three payments, once per year each. And then the loan amount. Again, we'll add, enter the $10,000 as a negative number so that we end up with a positive payment number. So our monthly our annual payment is $3,880. And if we make this payment three in th over three years, we will have paid off our $10,000 loan. Let's now walk through step by step. How do we accomplish that? This is called an amortization table. When you get a mortgage from a bank, they'll actually provide you with this table for the entire, if it's a 30 year long, 360 payments in details. So to start with, we have a balance of $10,000. That's how much we borrow. So in the first year, we owe the bank $10,000 and the bank will take $10,000 times the interest rate, which is 8%. So the bank will say, you owe us $800 in interest. We wrote a check to the bank for the payment that we computed earlier, the $3,880.34. When we subtract that, so for the, as far as the bank is concerned, $800 of this $3,880.34 is interest. So the remaining, so we take 38.80.34, subtract $800 in interest, that give us 30.80.34. That is considered your principal portion. This principal portion will be used to reduce your loan balance. So you originally owe $10,000. So we take $10,000, we subtract the principal portion, the $3,080.34. And now your new balance is $69.20, rounding up. So that's how we come up with our new balance of $6,920. We do the same thing the next year. So let's move on to the next year. So now our balance is 69.20. The bank is still charging us 8% because this is a fixed rate mortgage. So if we take 69.20 and multiply that by 8%, so 0 0.08, we will get $553.57. Go ahead and pause the video and work this out to verify that indeed you get the same amount. So take 69.20 times 0 0.08, that should get you $553.57. However, we also write the same check, right? Our payment remains fixed. Our payment is always 38.80. So if we take 38.80, that's the amount that we pay the bank, and we subtract what the bank consider our interest, $553.57. That will give us $3,326.76. And that's how we come up with the principal portion in the next year. And this will once again reduce our balance. So our 
balance our balance was sixty nine twenty. Now we're gonna subtract the thirty three twenty six seventy six that the bank consider our principal payment. That will reduce our new balance to thirty five ninety three, and that is our new balance. Please pause the video and verify that you understand and can get the same answers as my calculation. Now let's move on to the last year. Our balance is thirty five ninety three. Again, we have to pay interest on that, so we take thirty five ninety three and multiply point zero eight. We're still at eight percent. That should give you two hundred eighty seven dollars and forty three cents. That is our interest payment. Once again, we write a check to the bank for the thirty-eight eighty because that's our payment. If you subtract two eighty-seven forty-three from thirty-eight eighty, that will give you thirty-five ninety-two point nine, and that is your principal portion. And that's virtually the same. And if you subtract your principal from the period's balance, it will bring it down to zero. So this is how. When you borrow ten thousand dollars and you make payment of thirty eight eighty thirty four each year, after three years your loan will be fully paid off. Another thing that you want to notice, let me clear the board here, is that your interest portion goes down over time, and your principal portion goes up over time. So as the as you pay off more and more of your loan. A larger and larger portion of your payment. Notice that your payment is the same; it remains fixed. But a larger portion go now goes towards principal compared to interest. So that's why in later years of your mortgage, a larger amount will be used to reduce your loan balance. Congratulations! You have now understand a very complex concept in finance. Next, we're going to take a look at how does a balloon loan work. We're gonna use the same loan example, but remember when we use a balloon payment or a balloon loan, what happens is we pretend. So that's the hypothetical. We pretend that we have ten years to pay off the loan instead of three years. So what happens is when you use the payment function now, which is the same function and is the same interest rate, is eight percent. But instead of three years, we're gonna put ten years in here. And it's still the ten thousand dollar loan, and not surprisingly, you end up with a lower payment. So when we pay off the loan in full in three years, the payment was thirty eight hundred and eighty dollars. When we pretend that we have ten years to pay it off, it lowers the payment to fourteen ninety, more than half. But let's take a look at what happened with the amortization table. So basically, it's the same idea. We start with a ten thousand dollar loan, and we take ten thousand dollars and we multiply that by point zero eight, which is the eight percent, and that gives us eight hundred dollars in interest for the first year. But now we only pay our payment is only fourteen ninety. So when you subtract for eight hundred dollars. From fourteen ninety, that give us six hundred and ninety dollars and twenty nine cents. So that's our principal portion. And if you subtract the principal portion from our loan balance, so loan balance is ten thousand minus six ninety twenty nine, that means we still owe the bank thirty nine thirty three dollars and thirty ninety three hundred and ten dollars. So that's our new balance after the first year. We do the same calculation as we did before. So the next year, our interest portion is. So to get this is the ninety three ten. So take ninety three ten times eight percent. So times point zero eight. That give us seven hundred and seventy seven dollars and seventy eight cents. We make the same payment amount, and we if you subtract that, the bank will say out of the fourteen ninety. Seven hundred and seventy-four dollars and seventy-eight cents is considered interest. So the remaining seven hundred and forty-five dollars and fifty-two cents is considered principal, and that will be used to reduce your loan amount. 
So we do the same calculation as before, but now notice that because our payment is much lower, much less money is applied towards the principal. So your loan balance is going down much slower. At the end of three years, you make payment for three years, and this is the actual maturity. You still have seven hundred and seven thousand seven hundred and fifty nine dollars unpaid. So this is the remaining balance that now you have to pay off in one lump sum. So this is the balloon. So when we say this is a balloon loan, the balloon refers to this seven thousand seven hundred and fifty nine dollars. So you're making payment. You have a much lower payment, but you're not paying off your loan. So what do you do? People with balloon loans at the end of their balloon terms, they will have to refinance because most people don't have seven hundred and seven thousand and seven hundred and fifty nine dollars, or however much the ending balance is at that time. And if you are unable to refinance your loan at that time, you may face foreclosures. And that was part of the lessons that we learned from the financial crisis. People were taking out adjustable rate mortgage or graduate payment mortgage or interest only mortgage, and the hope was that when the balloon payment comes due, the housing price, the house prices will have gone up, and they will be able to refinance the loan. And if the house price did not go up, in fact, what happened in 2008, 2009, and 2010 is that house prices actually went down. So when the balloon payment comes due, they were not able to refinance the loan to pay off the balloon, and those houses get foreclosed. So it is important to take that into account if you decide to take on one of these other types of loans.、Um, they may be appropriate for some people.、Uh, one situation may be if you currently have a single working spouse and another spouse is、um, in school, and you expect that you'll have two income very soon. That may be one case where a balloon、uh, a balloon loan is appropriate, or a just or a graduate payment option is appropriate. But in most cases, it's more conservative to go with a fixed rate mortgage. Or、uh, at the、uh, uh, the other hand,、uh, the the most、uh, aggressive is to go with an adjustable rate mortgage. Now that you have a good understanding about mortgages, we'll end the video here. And in the next video, we're going to talk about how to get a house. See you soon.